not be next to the condos and residents. And I think there's a clean stretch there. It's pretty wide. And it would also be a nice kind of pond side little spot there, but it's not, it's not too long either. And I, I don't think it would, I don't know how the cost would rack up, but I'm just curious. Well, Middleton Avenue is pretty wide. I, we'd have to probably look at that, but it, it might be a possibility. Um, so I'll make that note. Number three, closed sidewalk gaps on Mill Street between the railroad tracks and Middletown Avenue on both sides of the street. We've talked about that at previous meetings. Number four, install sidewalk on one side of the street at the Spring Street Pond connecting Spring Street to Broad Street. We do have, we also have recently received some funding um, to do that project and other projects as related to the Spring Street Pond. So that's um, because of the funding opportunity probably also presents itself as a, as a higher rated project. And that's a dangerous spot too. Yes. Number five, add sidewalks on North End of Main Street and Hamner Road at the entrance to Cove Park. We have some funding for that through the CCGP. We don't have funding for the Main Street part of it at the end there. Obviously, Main Street narrows down as you enter Cove Park and the sidewalk stops. Six, add sidewalks on one side of Chesterfield Road connecting Main Street to Broad Street. Which side, Peter? I leave it up in the air. Those details would work themselves out at the appropriate time. Okay. I just didn't see the need to have sidewalks on both sides on a street that presently has no sidewalks. No, you don't need uh, both sides there. Right. That street is wide enough and very little traffic that it's not a hazard. So put a question mark on that one, you think? Well, maybe a C. Yep. Okay. I, I would agree with that, but I walk it many times to get to the green. Yep. Or drive it. Add sidewalks on the east side of Spring Street. Spring Street presently has sidewalks on one side, but on the pond side, uh, there are no sidewalks. That yes, I, I agree sidewalks there. I walked it the other day once one more time and uh, it should it should go along the pond because of the beauty of the uh, of, of it there and uh, that needs to be cleared out as well but the sidewalk would be real helpful and it only runs a little way along it or or it might I it's just needed there and we have we have funding uh, potentially for that I have, to, I have to withdraw my, my comments about the Middletown Ave of the multi-use path. I was really thinking about the Springs. That's where I was thinking of. I crisscrossed the streets, but yep. as opposed to a, you know, a narrow sidewalk, have a wider path that more people can be on, maybe bikes too. Okay. Uh, add sidewalks on the south side of Maple Street between Middletown Avenue and the Silestein Highway. So there's no sidewalk or the sidewalk stops, I should say. Um, this came up during a planning and zoning um, hearing on the uh, proposed restaurant down at the corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple. Uh, there's, it stops um, on one side, so you would go up and it would, so on the, on the um, gas station side, there's no sidewalks. Oh, it's on the other side of the street. That would also uh, take you over the railroad tracks there. Yes, it would. Yep. Definitely something needed there, Peter. That's the most dangerous area. And we're even having some, I'm having some concerns there. Apparently the state is and the town engineer on whether we did a good job at planning and zoning on the directions coming out of that proposed restaurant. Well, I think at planning and zoning, there was a recommendation that you bring it up to the tracks, but then people would walk up to the tracks, it would dead end, and then there's right. no sidewalk on the other side. We didn't think that made a lot of sense unless you did the whole stretch at one time. That's right. You can't have a crossover there. That wouldn't work at all. Not that stretch alone. 
Okay. There are some there are some grading and utility issues too with that side of the road that we've looked at uh, as part of that process. That yeah. would be some hurdles we have to overcome. It's a bigger project than just putting in sidewalks. There might have to be retaining walls and other other things have to happen. So, so are, are we saying, Peter, that we don't want it on the north side completely? It it already exists on the north side. And this is adding. On the All other the side, tracks toward the silence beam in front of the businesses there, right? So it would add it on the south side of Maple. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have it on both sides all the way, right? Right. Probably a good idea. Yes. Okay. I think DOT would go along with that. All right. Uh, close the sidewalk gap on Jordan Lane at the railroad crossing. It just kind of stops there and then starts up again. Uh, add sidewalk to at least one side of Silas Dean Highway between, trying to read this here, between Jordan Lane and the Hartford City Line. So the sidewalk stops at Jordan Lane on both sides of the Silas Dean Highway as you go under the, uh, through the underpass and up to Hartford. So people walk either in the street or in the grass. And where are you doing it? On the uh, west side of it, Peter? Or I, I'm not sure. I, I just you try it on the east side, you're going to run over a lot of people going up that ramp. Either way, it's not easy because of the on ramps and the off ramps. So, but I do think yeah. there's a lot of people who walk from yeah. um, the supermarket there into yes. Hartford. Yeah, yes. I agree. Oh, absolutely, I'm sure. Yep. <clears throat> and Peter, I, I'm okay if we just agree we don't worry about north, south, east, west side at this point. Right. Just that we need to do it on one side. I agree. That's why I didn't get into any of the in the minutia, so that you know the, that will figure itself out in terms of the best best way to do it. Okay. Number eleven. Add sidewalk to at least one side of the Silstein Highway between the Town Line Road and the existing sidewalk system in Rocky Hill. So that's the the opposite side of the highway. There's a gap there as well as you go underneath the interstate. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of people walking from uh, Walmart, Stop and Shop, into Rocky Hill. Yes. I often see people walking around the highway on ramp there. and It's very dangerous. Yes, it is. Do we have the width to allow us no, to, no. Uh, under the bridge, No. put a sidewalk in? That bridge needs to be reconstructed and widened because it's the piers are right up to the roadway. Yeah, right. It would be it would be challenging. We'll have to be reconstructed, Peter, somehow. And I oh, think you'd have great. to do more. You you may have to uh, control do do some stoplight control on the on ramps and oh, yeah. and the oh, and well, the off too. the off ramps because that's a high speed on ramp. So that whole intersection there would have to be looked at if you were to add a pedestrian sidewalk there. So it, it would be a big I, I hope the OT is looking at that part of it because they repaved Naraki Hill and Weathersfield, uh, the Silas Dean, but they don't deal with that critical area, which is real difficult yep. for everybody. Yep. Okay, uh, number Isn't 12. Under the bridge is in Rocky Hill, I thought? Yes, Town Line okay. Road is the, obviously as the name implies, it's the Town Line. Anything beyond that is in Rocky Hill. So we're kind of stretching our uh, authority, but it's I think important enough for us to make make that take that kind of position. I agree I with you, Peter. We have that concern. Rocky Hill sends us stuff these days, and we gotta we gotta work more closely with them on these kind of matters. Okay. I think it's complicated by the fact that I mean I know it's a lot of work, but there's a lot of people. I think you live in those Stepney apartments that don't drive. And so they yeah. rely on the bus and there's not as good bus service past town line. So if you want like late hours or whatever, they're taking the bus to like the town line area or the Red Lobster area and they're walking down because it's not that far, but there's no bus service and it's difficult to walk. So it's hard to access both ways when limited hours or extended hours. I've seen people in wheelchairs with, within the, you know, paved paved street trying to get through there. It's, it's, yeah. it's not good. Okay. Peter, Peter is the uh, Department of Transportation 
getting some of this discussion somehow? Uh, when it when this becomes some somewhat more of an official final series of recommendations, we will probably reach out to somebody there and at least um, start some of those conversations. Okay, I hope so. And then ultimately, when it is finally adopted, it becomes more official. Maybe, Maybe a recommendation in front of the planning and zoning be adopted there. Yes, by the council or both. Uh, by the planning and zoning commission. Okay. Thank you. We might need a uh, like even a subcommittee to deal just on state issues. Right. Yep. For a separate um, series of recommendations on state. That state sounds roads. like a good idea. Yep. Um, Peter, and this this is Tom again. Yep. Uh, you know, after the last meeting and with some of this discussion, we were talking uh, equity comes up a lot uh, for people in the community, and I. We talked about the top of where the Berlin Turnpike becomes 15. And uh, just, I have seen people, you know, putting it together now and never having to do it myself, except for once by bike. Uh, there are people who take their life in their hands all the time walking across to get towards, uh, to walk over the on ramp to get towards the stop and shop on Jordan. And I, I know you said that the state has plans for that of some type, um, but maybe I, I just wanted to mention that now so that when you know the appropriate place where we might mention that, there's a lot of people who just have jobs all up and down the, the Berlin Turnpike who walk back to their housing there. And uh, even if they put in a sign or uh, minimally a sign, or if there was some type of like very, very occasional uh, push a button crosswalk somewhere before the, the on-ramp. Uh, those poor people are always like <laughs> risking their lives day and night to get across there. So I'm just gonna leave that out there and, and hopefully you could tell us maybe where it might fit in the plan. Okay, if we get through this and it, it hasn't jump, can you jump back in again? Yep. Okay. Um, number 12, close the sidewalk gap on Town Line Road between Mount Laurel Drive and Charter Road. So if you go past the driveway to um, Stop and Shop on, on Town Line Road, the sidewalk ends. So uh, that's the recommendation there. And then a related recommendation is to up on Charter Road, if you can get up there from Town Line, uh, at least on one side of Charter Road, uh, add a uh, sidewalk, which would connect you ultimately with Maple Street. I think that's real important too, because I use that stop and shop and you see a lot of people and sometimes in, in stop and shop uniforms, so I think they're coming or going from work and they're yep. walking on, on charter. There's bus service, but if, you know, if it's an hour apart from the bus and you just missed one, you're going to walk down and try to go to like TJ Maxx to catch the next bus. Or maybe, you know, I don't know, stop and ask them, but I don't know where they're, they might be walking to home. They might be walking to the nearest bus stop, but there's a lot of walking traffic on, a fair amount of walking traffic on charter and it's narrow. Yep, so, it is. It's hard. Yep. Uh, add sidewalk on Longview between Wells and Stillwall Drive. Probably a kind of a smaller recommendation, but um, 15, add sidewalks on one side of the access drive into Millwoods Park. There's Can no I go back to the on Longview that even though it's not a big, you know, a big space, most of the high schoolers and middle schoolers that live in the housing um, development and also on the side roads off of Longview, that's what they use. They use the Longview corridor to Wells and there, you know, there's that section where there's no sidewalk at all. Then there's the, all the rest of Longview where there's one sidewalk and you, you come home at dismissal time at school and there's like kids all over, or there used to be, there's less kids now because they're hybrid, but um, there's a lot of kid traffic on that road um, in, the, in the afternoons and in the mornings too. So, you know, it's just a sec one section, but a, a sidewalk would be so much safer for the kids. Yep. Okay. Uh, Millwoods Park, any comments on that one? I don't know that that's the highest, but during the summertime, certainly there's a lot more foot traffic and bikes and whatever. Yep. Um, 16, add sidewalks to Fairmont near the middle school. There's a, just a, was in the, uh, that one is in the um, S SRTS uh, report. I should have put a note on that one. It came out of the uh, middle school um, recommendations. So that's a school related 
improvement. And um, number 17, add sidewalks on one side of Fox Hill Drive between Pondside and Maple Street. We're, we're kind of moving all over this. One of the things I, I probably will do, I'll go back and I'll, we had earlier divided the town into um, sort of neighborhoods. So maybe I'll put these in a geographic, in geographic pots so we can see where the uh, recommendations are distributed throughout the town. Here, the, um, the long view between Wells and Stillwald, yeah. that I also think should be a school zone. I think it is actually in, in one of the school recommendations. Peter. Okay. Derek? Yeah, with regard to the side number 15 for the sidewalks on the access drive to Mill yep. Woods, um, given the, you know, the usage at different times of year, I probably want to look at or recommend looking at maybe a stone dust path or something to that effect in the park rather than a concrete walk. Uh, most okay. of these are going to be concrete walks in the right of way, but uh, that one in particular, we might want to look at a different surface too. Okay. All righty. Okay. Um, take the heritage way off the off the parking lot too, because when you're when you're biking over that way, if you could get off on a stone dust path, you know, through the parking lot, it would be it would be good. Otherwise, you're riding through there. Yeah, you're riding right through the middle of the parking lot. And there's speed bumps in there too, I think. Okay. Um, all right, I think we covered this. 18, uh, add sidewalks on west side of Maple between Two Stone and Hang Dog. There's a sidewalk gap all the way down at the, the bottom of Maple. It just kind of stops for some reason. Uh, Close the sidewalk gap on Oxford Street on at least one side of the street. Probably a, a lower lower priority, but. Where is Oxford? I'm drawing a blank. Uh, let me think now. Um, Just north of Charles Wright School. Yes, that was this uh, was also in one of the SRTS recommendations. It is a really awkward, awkward just stop. You know, when you walk around there, it doesn't make any sense that there are no sidewalks there. And the kids walk through there to get through the backside of the school, so. Um, number 20, add sidewalks to at least one side of Cumberland, Cumberland Avenue between Follybrook Boulevard and Wolcott Hill Road. There are a tremendous number of state uh, employees who walk at different times of the day around a loop there and um, they're always there's no sidewalk so they're always walking uh, in the street plus there's a school there not that uh, not that it's a walking school because it's a charter school most of the parents drop them off but nevertheless that's the recommendation on that close sidewalk gaps on both sides of Park Avenue Park Avenue is the um, divided street with the sort of town green in the middle there's there's a couple, of the, and it's right near the community center. There's some weird sidewalk gaps up up in that, on that along that street. That's a high one because the kids walking to the summer camps and the. Right. Uh, add sidewalks on one side of Barstow Drive between Knott and Fairview Drive. Twenty-three closed sidewalk gap on Church Street near entrance to Heritage Bike Path. So at the end of Church Street, when you if you were coming out off the Heritage Bike Path um, up up Church Street, there's a there's some gaps down there. So if you were you were walking there and then you wanted to walk up to Wilkett Hill Road, you have to go back and forth across the street, or you walk in the street. Uh, add sidewalks to north side of Jordan Lane between Follybrook Boulevard and Ridge Road along Goodwin Park. So Jordan Lane has continuous sidewalk on the south side, has some sidewalk on the north side, but obviously where Goodwin Park is, there are no sidewalks on that side. <clears throat> do you really Not have sure. a lot, do you have a lot of pedestrian traffic that demands that side? I don't think so. 
Is, is I wonder a, if Goodwin Park owns that uh, portion of the land up to the road. Uh, plus, uh, it becomes a maintenance. Somebody's got to plow it, maintain it. If if you've got sidewalk on the other side of um, Jordan Lane already, <clears throat> so I'm not sure it should stay in the recommendation. The park there. I think there there is a bus stop on that side. You well, know, that land is that's town land, isn't it, uh, Peter? We own part of the park. Uh, no, we don't own any of the park. The city of Hartford does. We, but we own we own the right of way where the sidewalk would theoretically go. I mean, I mean they own uh, the the park in Wethersfield, the part of yes, town line road. Oh, yeah, really? Yes. Thank you. Yep. So, what do you think? Take it out. Uh, somebody said there's a bus stop. Yeah, with the new housing at the top of the hill and. Uh, everything going all the way down and single family down there. And we don't know what's going on down, you know, where the elderly, where the uh, housing was, the, uh, you know, the nur former nursing home. I don't know what would be going in there someday, but I think most of the activity is along the south side, so. Okay. But that you is have, contiguous. You have sidewalk there already on that yep. side of the road. Right, just maintain a good sidewalk there, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, yeah, Peter, just looking at that side on our, on our mapping, um, the, there's only a small stretch near Follybrook Boulevard and there's a crossing there at the intersection and then there's nothing until you get to Ridge Road. Um, you know, I, I would be inclined to maybe take that one out being state property and abutting the park, that's gonna be a, a lot of uh, heavy lift for I think City of Hartford for maintaining it. Yep, okay. <laughs> About as far as Goodwin Park Road. Say that again, Kevin. Maybe extend it from uh, Folly Brook to Goodwin Park Road. It's already there. Oh, it is. Okay, excuse me. Yep. Okay, and then the um, last one on this page uh, closed the sidewalk gap on the west side of Ridge Road between Jordan Lane and the Hartford city line. There's some ho single family homes and then there's some condos on the west side. There's some sidewalk, there's some gaps um, and there's no sidewalk on the other side of the street which is Goodwin Park. Right. And there could be a lot of walkers there going to the supermarket. It just gets a little funky when you get to this Hartford city line because there's an island you've got to cross back over again. But that's, those details could be worked out. That's Hartford's problem. Well, we need to do some intermunicipal cooperation. All right, 26, closed sidewalk gaps on the east side of the Berlin Turnpike between Jordan Lane and the Hartford city line. So once again, this is one street over. Um, there's some sidewalk um, and then there's um, gaps in the sidewalk. So this would get you from Jordan Lane a little closer to the Hartford city line. Good idea. Okay. Uh, 27 add sidewalks to one side of Follybrook Boulevard between Eagle Drive and Wells Road. So there's that stretch of Folly Brook that comes out of uh, Wintergreen Woods. There's no sidewalk at all on either side of that. So if you're walking um, on the Heritage bike path, there's you, you have to walk in the street and folks are coming out of the high school or at least a bike lane, something there, some sort of delineation of what what's going on there. It's a good idea in there. Didn't they widen that, Peter, at one point? They did a turning lane, I think, as part of the high school project. Yeah. And so there's isn't that of... part of the school project? No, no, it's part of the town right away. I thought Judy maybe meant it should be a priority because of its oh. proximity to the school. I got you. I got you. Right. Well, I priority. didn't, but thank you, Kevin. <laughs> Definitely a priority, I would agree. All right. 
Uh, add sidewalk to one side of Follybrook Boulevard. Well, we just covered that, sorry. Uh, add sidewalk to one side of Crest Street between Western Boulevard and Ridge Road. I think that also came out of one of the school recommendations. Between Ridge Road and where? Between Ridge and- uh, And the hill, the top of the hill? Yeah. Okay, probably a good idea. That may guess, be part of Web School. Yes, yeah. I think that's why they recommended it. It was a school route to Web. Closed sidewalk gaps on one side of Western Boulevard. Western Boulevard is also a school route. And um, there's a bunch of sidewalk gaps in there. And a lot of kids walk through there to get into the back side of the school. Add sidewalk to south side of Knott Street between Ridge Road and the Berlin Turnpike. That's a big project. Between where and where? Between Ridge and the Berlin Turnpike on Knott Street. There's no are sidewalk. These, are these people gonna be assessed for the sidewalks? Uh, that, that All of those details remain to be seen. And there's some serious uh, land cutting that would be needed to, to do that because you're going up that hill and there's a bank right there. So oh, yeah. it's a tough it's project. A, with a, a rock big, ledge in there. Yeah. It's a big project. Plus it's, it's getting you from or to the Berlin Turnpike and there's not a lot of pedestrian activity. So the cost versus the benefits and, and there's a sidewalk on the other side of the road. So I don't know if that's really needed. Right. Okay, I'll put a question mark on that one. Uh, 31, close sidewalk gaps on Goff Road on at least one side of the street between Knott and Prospect. So there's um, several gaps through that whole stretch. Yep. Um, yep. So we're just recommending that at least look at one side and make sure the gaps are filled to have one continuous side at least connected. I, I agree. I think that's a good one. Okay. Good spot. It'll just be technically hard with uh, slope cutting and stuff like that. Depending on where you are, yes. Yeah. Halfway down. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Close. Close sidewalk gap on north side of Wells Road between Goff and Cedar. This is number 32. That's a very hazardous area if anybody wants to walk in it. It is. I don't know if we want to even encourage people to walk. That's close to another DOT cluster. Well, maybe one of these days when DOT starts paving our east-west roads, uh, they will do turns and this kind of thing. Yeah, the DOT, the DOT, DOT typically but does right not. Now, they don't typically do sidewalks. No, they don't project. do it. All they do is pave. Yeah. At least the last 10 years, that's all they've done on Prospect and Wells. They, they haven't done any real improvements, no turns when they needed them, even yep. with schools and stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. 33, add sidewalks to east side of Berlin Turnpike between Arrow Road and Knott Street. Shouldn't that be a state project? Uh, it would, but if, if we don't identify it, you know, then it, may never, have, you know, if we adopt it in one of our plans, at least it's on a list of things that when a project comes along, we can point to it and uh, try and encourage the state if possible. Although the state does not build sidewalks. So it would have to be some sort of special project. Would, would it yes, be they did here. They, when they repaved the Silas Dean High, rebuilt the sidewalks along that 10 years. Well, that was a special, yeah. special project. 
crossing well, not probably street, it was yeah crossing not street uh, at the berlin turnpike you know crossing the berlin turnpike what a nightmare that is yes uh, i don't know if you want to even get into that i mean well that's why well, i had it on the um east side. east side so if you came down one of the local roads going into the berlin turnpike at least you connect to it rather than trying to cross over to the um to the west side yeah haven't we gotten some concern at planning and zoning on the need for this kind of thing i see Maybe. people walking along the berlin turnpike all the time oh yeah i see side not the west side and if it if it's dot and some funds come along fine when they redo uh berlin turnpike Peter, i thought when they um showed the plan for the putnam bridge and the glastonbury site they showed sidewalk improvements over there they did so it's another special project that if but if it, uh, if they were just doing a maintenance project where right. they're repaving the understood street, yeah, but as you say, if it's in the books and they're yep. doing something, right? Okay. Yeah, that's and a we, very. We hazardous don't know with the new federal administration whether uh, an infrastructure program is going to bring serious money into road road work. So um, you know, we got to be prepared with uh, these plans so that we can avail ourselves of. And this recommendation is only between Arrow Road and Knott Street. It doesn't go beyond Arrow because of the on-ramps, the bridge, um, you know. So these this would connect to some of our side streets at least. Uh, so it doesn't recommend it up and down the Berlin Turnpike or on both sides of the Berlin Turnpike, just um, one side. And um, Derek, uh, as part of the, the synchronized uh, signals up on the Berlin Turnpike, weren't they going to try and do something at the Arrow Road crossing? Yes, uh, they were looking at um, a new crosswalk there, although they aren't putting in specific signals just for the pedestrian crossing. Uh, the new, I guess the new federal standards are uh, that people would, in that case, cross the road when Arrow Road has a green light. And Berlin Turnpike has stopped, so that's that's their new. Where at Arrow Road? At Arrow Road, yeah. So they might there Good might idea. be some side, there might be some crosswalk improvements like that, but um, nothing up and down the length of Berlin Turnpike. That's a good location for it if you're going to do a crossing. But. There aren't there uh, several businesses in that stretch. Uh, what businesses would be there? But there's there's ho there's motels there. There's Dunkin' Donuts, if that restaurant ever finishes itself, you've got the shopping center with Pollo Guapo, Atlas Tile. I, I, I would so think this is a busy area. It is. It is. Very busy. You've got kids who could walk over to the Humane Society for volunteer. I mean, when kids want to volunteer, they want to go to the Humane Society. Uh, but I mean, just connecting our town overall. It'd be really nice to have that in there, even if it's a Hail Mary in terms of funding, is to get the Berlin Turnpike to be more pedestrian friendly. You know, it's it's unsafe, but it could also be uh, seeing more pedestrians might slow some people down as well, especially if there's some walkways for them. Right now, it just feels like you just feel sad for whoever's walking on the side because they're kind of they're like Indiana Jones out there. And, you know, if, if there was more facilities for it, I think people would, it might have a calming presence or maybe I'm optimistic, but I think it might. Tom, how does this recommendation uh, factor into what you were saying earlier? Oh, I mean, the equity uh, in our town, I mean, we want part of the plan and part of the funding and part of all this stuff is to, to benefit all the citizens in our town, you know, and, and, I think that when we talk about situations like this, this is a this is a difficult situation for people who are might be underrepresented in terms of like, you know, they're not able to drive and they've got a job somewhere on the Berlin Turnpike and they're trying to get home to where they live, either in the condos further on, or maybe they're uh, you know, it, it's just it's one of those situations where it would be nice for them to have 
you know, so at least a, on the radar at some point, you know? Not only that, we tend to forget that there are, there are condos up off of Russell Road and uh, oh, yeah. off Barrow Road and uh, and then there are uh, uh, excuse me uh, and and then there are the uh, other other residential areas along there uh, the old motels there's a lot of this kind of thing and you others have mentioned it. so we got to I mean, do these kind of things. There's a really easy shot that would make things really great for that, but it's all state property is, is to walk through the, between the Jewish cemetery access road, up through the back of the state hospital, the former state hospital. That would be an easy pedestrian greenway right there, but it's so secure locked down. Um, the fencing's already there to keep you from going into the quarry. Hey, Derek, I went, had to go up there when we looked at the top of Arrow Road recently, and if the state ever decides to sell off their land up in there, along where they used to have a lot of facility uh, for private development someday, which could happen, uh, we better be ready for it. I know what you mean, what you're talking about. It would okay. just connect that side of the town. It's, it's, it's like a it's almost an impenetrable barrier the the berlin turnpike is you know it's sad to say but it is yep okay um I want to jumping in this yep this is casey white i just want to agree with everything tom has been bringing up um uh, like berlin turnpike and silas dean near jordan lane I, I think uh the equity piece is really important because um this the, the sidewalk gaps are affecting people who don't have access to cars or other ways of transportation so they're they're relying on this as a way to get around and it's really heartbreaking to see people walking on those incredibly dangerous stretches um just because they have no other option you know so i think that's a, an important thing to highlight even though it's seems really far off and kind of impossible i agree that if if we can do anything i think if you build it people will come and i think that can only snowball into into better things in the future, even though that might not be easy to predict. There are many children living in those motels and uh, you know apartments, whatever, uh, walking along there as well. Okay, let's um let's move on so we can uh, you guys can get out of here at a reasonable time. Number thirty four, add sidewalk to west side of Collier Road uh, between Prospect and Highland Streets. So that whole street has got um, and it's wide. Uh, let's see, add sidewalk on north side of Prospect between Newington Town Line and 721 Prospect. The sidewalk just stops at 721 and there's a long stretch of no sidewalk. Um, not sure what it really would connect to, but nevertheless. Um, I, I I seldom see anybody on that road walking. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, 36, closed sidewalk gap on prospect between Dunham Street and Ridge Road. Dunham is where the, um, those condos across from the church, there's just a gap in there, it stops for some reason. Yeah, I'd like to see that done. I drive there all the time because I live there. there. Yep. Yeah, it's badly needed. Okay. Part, part of any re reconstruction along Prospect, they should be doing that kind of thing. Yep. I don't like this idea that they don't put sidewalks in the state when they pave their highways. I mean, it's ridiculous. Tell but the governor, will. George. Well, he will. There you, you go. Have a, if I ever get a chance to talk to him about that. 37, closed sidewalk gap on Thornbush Road on at least one side of the street. There's fits and starts of, of uh, I would probably recommend uh, not on the um, not on the farm side of the street. Yet yeah. there's there's a pedestrian crossing at that uh, over prospect that goes from nowhere to nowhere. Right. 
that would be on the same side as Maxwell Park. Eventually, as it goes in. Yeah. Uh, yes. That's. Yeah. Eventually, there's some sidewalk there, and eventually, that matches up with a little tiny bit of sidewalk over across from Hayes Farm Store, and then goes into a, an access way that goes behind the school to their fields. Yep. So. Okay. Start to connect with other towns too. Close sidewalk gaps on both sides of Highland Street between Collier Road and Griswold Road. So Highland Street also has a bunch of gaps. That would be a big project, but. I think worthy though. Yes. Close sidewalk gaps on Highland Street at the Rocky Hill Town Line and congratulations, that was just done this year, so. Um, and the crosswalk was put in there as well. Number 40. Yeah, hold on, Peter. And, uh, let me ask a question. We just paved Highland Street, right? Was yes. that a state grant for that? And we didn't put sidewalk gap? We did. Fill? We did. It, that, we closed that gap. That's why it says done on that one. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Yep. I apologize. Uh, 40, closed sidewalk gap on north side of Two Rod Highway between Monticello and Liberty Hill East. It's just a small stretch, but once again, there's a gap, there's a strange little gap in there. Closed sidewalk gap on east side of Pack Lane between Whippoorwill Way and Lincoln Lane. This would obviously be on the on the Weatherstone side, not the Billington side, but there's a gap going down to that new subdivision down at the end of back lane. Uh, 42, closed sidewalk gap north side of Hangdog Lane from Cross Hill to Maple. And then 43, closed sidewalk gap on Clearfield between Ridge and Wilkett Hill Road both sides of the street. Okay. Almost done on sidewalk gaps here. Last couple. Uh, closed sidewalk gaps on Dick Street on one side of the street between Ridge and Wilkett Hill Road. Forty-five closed sidewalk gaps on both sides of Ridge Road. This is a question mark. Um, Ridge is obviously a main north-south artery. For good portion, no. it's got sidewalks on both sides, but there are stretches where there are only sidewalks on one side. No, I'm not in favor of it, Peter. I walk. Uh, I walk it a lot from my Clearfield. Uh, you know, almost daily parts yep. of this. And there, there is strong uh, a rock formations along the west side of uh, yeah. Ridge. And, uh, you know, it'd be a major construction thing to put sidewalk in. And you don't need it. You got it on one side. Just, yeah. And, there, and the sidewalk is good on Ridge Road, actually, most of it. Yep. I, I concur on that. I don't think that's a high priority. Yep. In fact, I, I want it eliminated. And if you don't eliminate it here, I'll eliminate it planning and zoning. So that's how strongly I feel about it. Yeah, it's, it's, it it's not a recommendation, it's a question mark, so. Oh, well then eliminate it. There you go. 46, Ridge Road, south of Knott Street. Should we, it's the same, same question, basically. So, and then um, last question. Uh, Willow Street should it have sidewalks on both sides, or just make sure we have a connection. Um, the uh, the safe routes to school report I think recommended on both sides, but we have uh, Wilkes Farm running through there. Yeah, uh, no, Peter, no, doesn't make sense for that reason. Yep. One East side. side One side. Okay, let's move on here. If, before we knock out uh, 45 totally, um, is there, uh, could we do like crosswalks just painted, like it costs not a lot maybe, just where 
the gaps on Ridge are, um, just to, to get people onto the other side when they have to cross? There's only like a, a mid, mid, mid block crosswalks. Yeah, mid block crosswalks. So that I think that's a good idea to get people around. Yeah. And that might help the slowing too on Ridge. Yeah, we, we don't normally like to do that. I'll let uh, Derek uh, jump jump in if he wants to, but um, you know, maybe on individual case by case basis, we can look at it as long as they're somewhat protected in some way. I think one is on a corner. Yeah. Where, where one is. Work. Yep. Okay, great. With All discretion, right. I guess, is the way we should. Yes. Okay. Certain locations, maybe, but not others. Yeah. So when we did the um, the various intersection evaluations, when, when many of you folks volunteered, there were notes and uh, recommendations that uh, additional crosswalks or crosswalk improvements uh, should be uh, recommended. So the next few um, recommendations deal with adding crosswalks. I don't think there are many mid-block crosswalks. So these are, I think all or almost all at stop sign controlled intersections where there are presently no painted crosswalks. So that's the premise under which these recommendations are, are being framed. So let's jump right into it. Hanged, um, so once again, Copper Mill was identified as one of those stretches of road where there's a, at least a perception of high speed. So um, not that we want to use crosswalks to control that, but there are already stop signs, but the crosswalks may enhance the effectiveness of the stop signs. So first one is Hangdog and Copper Mill. Have people asked for it up there? They probably have. They were identified. So I, we would have to obviously do some community outreach to see what the folks in the neighborhood think. But nevertheless, they were identified as uh, maybe being appropriate at these intersections. Um, Hangdog and Highcrest. Uh, two Rod, Old Reservoir, and Bay Rock. Highland and Thornbush. Now, I think we just put, I think, Derek, you did put um, a crosswalk across Highland as part of the Highland Street project. Yes, we did. So that's probably a good idea there. Yeah. So that's kind of done already. Um, okay, good. Half Island of it's and, done. Yeah, yeah. Thornbush isn't doesn't have a crossing, I don't think. Um, but it, but there's no sidewalk, I don't think, on the other side, so it wouldn't make sense anyway. Uh, Highland and Copper Mill. Copper Mill and Fox Hill. The residents down on Fox Hill, there's a sidewalk, big sidewalk gap down there, and there was lots of support to add sidewalk down there. Copper Mill and Morgan Circle. Goff and Colonial Drive. Ridge and Crest. Yeah, a lot of kids one. walk into the park there. Yeah. That one takes care of a lot of the gaps, too. It would be right. an obvious good place to cross. Yep. Uh, Mapleside and Dix. This was recommended in the Safe Route to School report. Follybrook and Spruce. Peter. Yes. Maybe Maybe I missed it, but where did these locations originate? They came out of the, uh, when we had the volunteers out doing the intersection uh, okay. uh, inventories and evaluations, there were notes and so they, they really just came from that. And well, I, they were talking to local people when they were out there doing this, right? I'm not sure um, if, 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 
was that level of interaction. But I think when people were doing the evaluations, they, you know, really observed, look, there's no crosswalks here. Why not? Why shouldn't there be? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I mean, I, we, have to, we, we have to do our own, you know, warrants and analysis, but nevertheless, um, I think all of them have full stop sign controls and they have um, uh, curb ramps to a certain extent. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know, before we finalize the plan, we might wanna do some level of preliminary engineering to determine, you know, sift out those that don't right. work for some reason. So we're not making a recommendation that is not something we'd wanna pursue. Yep. Okay, good. I think that goes with all of these recommendations. They have to be fleshed out further before they get finalized. These are draft. But if there are areas that have curb cuts, that's obviously an area where people are encouraged to walk. And it seems to me those should all, wherever there's a curb cut, there should be a crosswalk. Yep. Just on that. Yeah, on that I mean, the, only, oh, God, the, the only thing I was going to say is we, we have those all, all over town. So, you know, the, the need for a actual painted crosswalk really comes up based on, you know, proximity to schools, traffic volumes, um, things of that nature that, you know, we want to look at these areas a little bit more closely uh, to see if we feel that it would warrant that before we recommend it. Because, you know, we do go around every year and paint these, um, you know, that can be a pretty expensive cost. So, we, you know, not to say it's not worth it for safety, but in some areas, even though there's a curb cut at an intersection with stop bars, doesn't necessarily mean it warrants having a painted um, crosswalk. Uh, Peter, are you and Derek are going to do this before it comes to planning and zoning? Yes. Good. Okay. Thank you. So the, I mentioned on that on that um, spruce to Follybrook one. There's also there's an opportunity like there's Hillsdale, which which is a a dead end kind of, but like with a little cut through could be could be hooked into the sidewalk network on Follybrook, and then and then Greenfield comes down there too. Which Peter, Rocky. are you aware that the Heritage Way, especially the one that runs up through the center of town, behind the high school and so forth, that that, of course, is an MB, MDC right away? Of course it is, you know. Yes, I mean, yes. Major shore line runs through it. Yes, it, it does. I don't know yeah. why, in some cases, some of that has been improved recently with pipe construction in the Dixwell, Dix area. Uh, I'm going to be talking to uh, our MDC representative now, who's uh, our former mayor, and ask him if uh, the MDC can work with the town on uh, maybe some improvements along the Heritage Trail. So we'll see what happens in the spring, maybe. Um, Andy, of course, lives up near me here in the same block I live on. Yeah, Andy well, Adel, you're talking about, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, Rob, you were on. You were on. You you all of a sudden went on mute, mute Rob. So I don't know if you're back. Did you mute want to finish your thought? Mute button. But I was just saying on on Follybrook with that with that Spruce Street and Greenfield and and Hillsdale connecting to the sidewalk network. I mean, Green they could serve as you know connections, but they could also serve some, as some traffic calming and an air you know an area that's a speed zone approaching that. Heritage Way, and um, I mean Greenfield. It kind of comes down. The sidewalk comes down, and then there's a sidewalk on the other side at the at the condos, wherever they are there. And then yeah. uh, and then Spruce, the same thing. But Hill Hillsdale is a little cul de sac, and I think if you just the people that live in all those neighborhoods, if you just cut a little path onto the sidewalk, they could hook it to that network too. But I just think that stretch. That's one of my bike routes. That stretch is a is a as a speedway, and I know that there there was a lot of focus on a couple of years ago, trying to figure something out there. But I mean, for me, the, the crosswalks, and I mean, they're sometimes they're counterintuitive, but like the, the crosswalks could be speed control too. Yep. Okay. Um, Highcrest, uh, Quail Hill, and Lantern. I'm on number twelve. Thornbush and Highland, that's the one we talked about earlier. That 
uh, on Highland, that one is done, was recently done as part of the Highland Street project. Uh, garden and Knot, that's obviously in the CCGP um, project, so that will be taken care of. Broad and Footpath, that's a funky one. Um, I think that, putting uh, crosswalks there would make it worse. Yeah. Isn't that a narrow street, Footpath? I mean, real narrow. Footpath is a side street off of yeah. Broad, where Broad is where you, where you come down Middletown and then it hits the Broad Street Green. Footpath oh, is the street uh, on the right. Yeah, okay. And anything there, they should be moving the stop sign. <laughs> yeah, I think, that, that, I think that maybe should be uh, maybe in the next section, which are spot improvements, that little area, and it's very funky. But, but people do that loop and they cross over the sidewalk to get to the other side of the Broad Street Green at Footpath. And there's not a great, so it's, it's just a funky little spot there. The southern end of the Broad Street Green needs a better crossing. Yeah, that's what we're I saying know here. The, and Judy, I strongly support you living in that area. You and all of them down would want that. I mean, that, that's funky and crazy in there, that southern end. And it doesn't have a good cross. It's probably the most important crosswalk in town, as far as I'm concerned, right now. I feel Except like. I don't think a crosswalk is going to improve it. I think it needs some major change. Yep. Yeah, yeah, probably. More than a crosswalk. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Crosswalk is a minor part of that whole area, yes. Okay. Crosswalk I'll is just going to invite to people to cross there. Yeah. We'll move it out of the crosswalk category. It'll be in the Maybe next one. A we'll little get... further south, but not too far, because yeah. then you just start, you know. And there's a monument right there, so you can't really mess with that. So, all right, let's move on. Broad and Garden. What do folks think about that? That's a busy yes. one. Okay. What if it's lots what of if we, foot traffic? That there's a lot of people walking there. Plus, it's a high speed. People, you know, come flying down. There's no you don't you don't have to stop on Broad Street. I don't know how that would be received in the neighborhood, but. I'm, I live near there and I, I very much support that. I think there's, we do need a few more crosswalks around the green in general. Okay. I think you gotta put a bridge over it to the cemetery. <laughs> I'm just I kidding. I think a four way crosswalk there would be a good thing. Oh. Crossing across garden, crossing across broad and. Yep. Uh... Okay. Were we saying earlier there though that uh, I thought, Peter, you prefaced this with saying these are uh, crosswalks where there are already stop signs. Yes. So this one is not. That's why I um, I, I wanted to bring up the conversation <laughs> about they're not okay. being they're not it's being very a stop dangerous sign. there, Peter. When you come there, try to get over the other side. Oh yeah, it's definitely. And then we have been asking you for by people in general, and and then there's a cemetery there. You got to think of these. Uh, we've been asking for 40 years for a four-way stop there on, on the between Garden and Broad, and it's never happened. Okay. Well, here's the starting point. The one we thing we got to consider too is, you know, if we're doing crossings of Broad Street there, like say that intersection, there there is no sidewalk along the green to connect to. So that, right. you know, that's, that's just something we got to take into consideration. Yes. Yep. All right, let's move on. Cumberland and Oxford Streets. This was uh, once again in the Safe Route to School uh, report, as was Knott Street at Charles Wright School. That one might be that one might that one might have been fixed already. That's I think been before, it's been done. So I, I so number tw eighteen <laughs> is done. <clears throat> Nineteen Hartford Avenue and Avalon Place. That's done, right? Recently done. Yes. Yep. Yes. Okay. Church and Rosedale. I believe that's that was done. Correct. State and Megat Park was done. Yep. Highcrest and Cedarwood Drive. We're moving back all over the place on here in town. So we're back down to Highcrest and Cedarwood.
Pete, are you doing more work down in old Weathersfield as far as design and improvements other than what you did a year or two ago? Uh, we haven't finished the designs yet. Oh, you haven't? No. Okay. Well, you got more to do though. Okay. Yes. All right, last couple of crosswalks so we can keep moving along here. Willow and Glenwood, this was also in the SRTS. Was this done, Derek? Not yet, right? Yeah, I don't think this one's been done. Was done yet? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't believe so. Right, uh, Cotwell at Corpus Christi. That was also in the SRTS for the middle school. There's a recommending a crosswalk and some sidewalk there. Uh, Not and Yale Street. This would be a mid block, though I think. Yeah, this is one of the locations uh, the UConn students are looking at. Yep. And the need for that is the convenience store? Is that what's driving this? Yeah. Okay. Good idea. As a planning and zoning commissioner, and uh, this shouldn't be reported publicly, but my, I have feelings that up in there, we need some kind of commercial improvement but, uh, in that area. Like uh, we have uh, on uh, Walcott Hill near me at Clearfield and, uh, and Dale. Okay. And then the uh, last one, Highland and Collier. Wouldn't that be in the schools as well? I think it is, but I have to go back and check and confirm that one. I'll put it SRTS. So I think that, I think that was one of those recommendations. Okay. Uh, Peter, just to go back to your uh, Glenwood and Willow, <clears throat> there is a crosswalk there. It, it crosses the intersection at a skewed angle. It's, it's not the best set up. I think that's one of the locations the students were looking at as well to give us some recommendations. Yep. Okay. So it and, wouldn't be a new one. It would just be a realignment or. <clears throat> and there is, a cross, there is a crosswalk at Highland and Collier already. It's sort of at an angle. Yep. Okay. All right, moving on. Uh, so the last category tonight to talk about are spot improvements. These are intersections that uh, could be uh, Im improved, uh, repaired, fine-tuned. Uh, there's a series of potential uh, improvements that um, were potentially identified. So it runs the gamut from major improvements to minor improvements. So we'll try and get through these. Um, how are we doing with time? What, what time is it now? 7.50, okay. Um, all right, Wilkett Hill and Knott Street. This was, an SR, this was also an SRTS recommendation. So obviously that's a pretty funky intersection. The crosswalks are at strange angles. We're also having the Yukon students look at this. So that could be a significantly sized project. Uh, the following uh, are being covered under the, the CCGP grant. So Maine and Hartford, we've talked about that in various reports, Maine, Maine and state. Uh, state and Knott Street was recently done within the last few years. Uh, Garden and Knott Street will be done as part of the CCGP. Marsh and Broad will also have some funding to fix the, uh, adjust the, the crosswalk there, make it a little more high profile, high visibility. Um, we continue to get complaints about Silas Dean Highway and Church Street with people taking the right, right on red and not seeing the potential kids crossing at the crosswalk because they've moved the crosswalk farther to the uh, south. Just to Not sure what the solution is, maybe eliminating the right on red, but. Uh, we, we did talk about this police department and myself uh, approached DOT with the concern. Um, their response was if there's a pedestrian button crossing and someone, you know, and that those signals have been activated, then people shouldn't be making a right turn on red. Right. So they um, didn't seem to 
agree with us that of the concern. So well, one of the thoughts was that that we could eliminate the right turn on red, although um, in talking with the chief, it was originally put in to address uh, the parents that are picking up their students at Southeast Middle School and the heavy traffic we have at certain times of day to allow it to flow better. So that's kind of a tough one. And we, I, I raised that pro that concern myself, PD raised it, DOT kind of pushed back on it. So I think what they had done um, recently, we had a sign put up on one of the posts that indicates there's a crosswalk to the right as you're approaching, um, which is not the best solution, but that was at least something to give a little bit of a heads up that there is a crosswalk coming up. So it's probably worth keeping by the list though, right? Yeah, I would. I would. I don't see any harm in keeping on the list as a as an area that we've addressed as a concern. Yep. Derek, have they ever looked at like uh, just a bump out? Like, I, I, it's funny because I went down there today again, and I think that there's just some of it. You could put all the signs you want, and I saw three cars in a row, and they you just they treat it like a yield. They just, you know, I think it's because it's, it's people cutting through. It's a cut through down. Come off downhill. Low. It's downhill down. too. Yeah, they're they were avoiding something. You can just tell they're like most people go through there in a in a California stop at best, you know, just and roll through. But I'm just wondering if it's a physical bump that they have to that you just can't make a sharp yield. And you actually, you know, it's almost like you have to physically you have to make a physical um, end to the to the behavior because I don't think signs I work. I almost got hit by a car turning right there. And I think they genuinely just had no idea. They're, they're probably not paying attention to the, whether the sign is on. So I think it is something to keep brainstorming on. Is there a sign there that says when pedestrians are present under, there's, there's sometimes that no right on red when pedestrians are present. Would that be a, this something, I don't know. Is that there already, or is that something that we might put there? Um, we could look at adding something to the effect that gives you more notice of that kind of similar, like I was saying, there is a pedestrian crossing sign there as you come down the hill on Church Street. Um, generally, it's just state law that you are not supposed to make that movement when the pedestrian signal's been activated. Yeah, I just, I was looking at some signs where they just re-emphasize that, they re-educate you know, trying to educate people to be more aware, you know, just as additional signage. I don't know, just a thought. Um, that That's right around the corner from me. It's there, I've almost been hit multiple times. The, um, I've watched kids almost been hit. It's a very dicey spot. So. Yeah. A neighbor of ours was the um, cr crossing guard there for a couple of years. And he just has one story after another. I mean, it's just a very dangerous stretch yep. in general. And, and Peter, one, one of the ideas that I had is just, and this, this might be a conversation for another day, but anything Silas Dean Highway related, we might want to group together based on some of the other thinking we're doing yep. uh, for that road. Good idea. Okay. We, there's clearly consensus on this one. We, we're not going to solve it tonight. So let's um, move on to the others. Wilkett Hill Road and Jordan Lane. That whole intersection, four-way stop underneath the underneath the bridge. It's been different ideas, different improvements done, but not sure what the solution is there. But I think it's worth keeping on the list. Uh, Wilkett Hill Road and Church Street. Um, if you talk to the traffic uh, uh, guard there, uh, crossing guard there, you'd probably hear very similar stories to the church and um, Silas Dean intersection. It's only got, and it's only got crosswalks on two of the legs, not three legs. Uh, that might help too, I don't know. That was also in the SRTS report. Um, prospect and golf. Uh, Wolcott Hill, somebody said something on number 10? What's that, Walcott Hill and Clearfield? Okay, Walcott yeah. Hill and Clearfield slash Dale, that whole area around the market. Oh yeah, major issue. Yeah, I'm not sure what the solution is, but nevertheless, I think it's probably warrants to continue to be on, be on here. Yeah, because there's a possibility of some improvements in that area commercially. So uh, we don't know what the future holds except 
there's drainage and other, other issues on both streets. Yeah. Okay. Stuff. Maple and Middletown yeah. Avenue. I think the state is looking at that intersection uh, as we speak for some possible timing changes and things like that. Yeah, there's a signal project that'll be. Yep. A signal project, Derek, what? What are they thinking? Uh, they're doing upgrades to the, they're upgrading their signals. Um, I know pedestrian crossings was part of that project. So I don't know what the status of that was. I don't think okay. they got to it last year. So maybe it's coming up this year. Okay. There is one crosswalk on there uh, going across Maples. Yeah. Uh, Maple and Silestein Highway. Probably the busiest intersection in town. I, I might, we might argue. Always was, it is, and it will be. Uh, Silas Dean and Knott, Knott Street. What do, you, what do you want to do there? I'm not sure. It's not, it somehow showed up on the list. I'm not sure if it is. I think uh, that has the same problems as Silas Dean and Church with the crosswalks too far away from the corner. Yeah. Okay. When they redid Silas Dean, all the, all the intersections have that same design flaw. Same, same Kevin as we had in old Weatherfield with a lot of the old intersections. No, I, you know, I, actually, day. those yeah. intersections, the sidewalks and the crossings and the ramps were yeah, redone recently. It, it, wasn't part of, right? it wasn't part of the original project. DOT actually went out of their way to move the, uh, the, the ramps and the crossings away from the corners, which, as, as you mentioned, on some of these intersections, I think it actually makes it more dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was well-intentioned because it reduces the crossing distance, uh, but it creates a huge visibility issue for people blowing around corners in cars. <laughs> okay. Um... Silas Key Highway and Corn Lane. Those are really wide, particularly on the Jordan Lane. It's really wide crossings on the shopping center side. But and there's no sidewalks to really get to other than the bu the bus shelter there. You also have that U-turn for people coming from from uh, the Hartford side and trying to get on the 515. Yep. Yeah, it's a crazy, crazy intersection. Uh, Ridge Road and Wells Road. We have the, um, that's where we have the flashing stop sign, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Derek, do we know if that's had a, any kind of a significant benefit or? I'd, I'd really like to see. I don't like that intersection. It's too bad 20 years ago, we didn't put a, a traffic light in there, but one of the neighbors didn't like it, Peter. It's before your time, I think, and uh, it never went through. But uh, my aide had a uh, assistant. She, she was going through, she's a good driver basically. And uh, she had a problem with an accident there, a minor one about a few months ago. And, uh, I, I just don't like it uh, there. It's uh, the crest and approaching it. And, and again, uh, part of it is uh, working down toward the school and everything else. So uh, yeah, that's a difficult intersection. Something okay. should be done more there. Uh, Peter, you're asking about the sign. We're talking about Ridge and Wells. Are you referring yeah. to the stop, new stop signs at Ridge and not? Yeah, the yeah. ones that Ridge and yeah. not. I can walk yeah, to them. Ridge, Ridge and not, we put in the flashing stop signs yeah. a few years ago. They're back. very effective there. Yeah. And, and I would say that would, might be a good thing to put there at the uh, Ridge, and, Ridge and Wells as well. I mean, yeah. I, I, I walk there every other day. So I see that, you know, the, they're very visible. The cars are stopping when they see them flashing, especially at night. Okay. Uh, Goff and Wells. The state has a, a signal improvement yes. project coming up there, which okay. will address some of the pedestrian crossings. All right, beautiful. 
um, 18, uh, prospect in Willow. Didn't that get done recently, last couple of years? There was a signal project there? Yes. I thought so. That's, that's really kind of done. I think that came out of the SRTS report before that was done. Um, golf and prospect. What do you want to do with that? You just pay golf there. Then you both sides. We just paid golf uh, north of the intersection. Oh, yeah, yes. not the other side. From the intersection north. Right. Is that that road is yeah. not going to be encompassing the the planning for the uh, drill and turnpike? It's too far away, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Might have been an interest in a uh, crossing light. I'm not sure. I think that's what it is. I think it has the it has the uh, short pedestrian buttons, the old style. So maybe that's what that was. Well, you know, there's a big there's a curve to the east there that that's yeah. partially blinding almost on prospect uh, as you approach you go yeah. west. Yeah, and uh, it. Uh, you come upon the intersection that's uh, not good for a state highway with speeds through there. So. Right. Okay, the next two have to do with railroad track crossing. So at church, at the crossing at Church Street and the crossing at Knott Street, uh, they're just recommending, you know, proper crossings, sidewalk, uh, and, and fixing where those crossings uh, exist. I have a question about both of those. The MDC, yeah. I believe, is the one that's doing the repairs under the tracks right now. Um, are they going to be repaving? Because those are very, very badly paved roads. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> For Church Street, they'll be coming in and doing a mill and overlay from Silas Dean Highway to Garden Street that encompasses that project. With Knott Street, the state during our initial conversations uh, was going to allow them just to do patch repairs and not do a full mill and overlay like I had requested. Although uh, with recent conversations, they have done some extra excavating to replace and repair sanitary sewer laterals that were uh, in need of repair. So I've already reached out to the state and MDC and uh, encouraged the state to require them to mill and overlay that stretch of Knott Street as well. Needs it. It's so, it's terrible. Well, yep. doesn't the MDC pay for all this repaving work, sir? Yeah, it's their project. They'll be paying for the repaves on, on these two roads. Good. Okay. If they're de determined that they have to do it. They will on church. That was part of the original plan. Uh, not street. I'm not sure yet. I haven't gotten a response from MDC. I know DOT had said they would be in favor of that, but MDC was going to get back to them on it. Uh, but uh, the railroad tracks in both areas can be a problem for any of our railroad tracks across major roads like that. So I yes. hope that you'll deal with that also. I don't okay. know how, because the, the, the train tracks are who's. I mean, they're not DOT, really. They don't own up to them, do they? Uh, DOT the has, has an easement. Let me think how this works. I think DOT has the easement and cross the town right away. So they do own the tracks. They lease them to the railroad company. Oh, now repairs do. to the roads they adjacent really to the tracks. They make sure they are level and reasonable to traffic. You know, yeah, I've, traffic had many, many, I've had many conversations with DOT and the railroad company about the pavement conditions. Um, on these two roads for not in church originally, what NDC was going to do was actually dig up the tracks and do an open trench. And then they were going to do uh, brand new concrete encased rails across the road, which would have been great. Like they did over on uh, Maple street recently. Um, well, not NDC, but the railroad company did. Um, although they decided to change their plan and Jack underneath the, the tracks. So that's well, an issue. Really the, the, they, they, they claim it's our, it's our road. So it's our responsibility. Um, really? Some of them will be addressed. Church Street, not. Uh, Maple's been done. Mill, uh, Middletown Avenue crossing's been done. Mill Street. So a lot of them we've been hitting anyway. Um, but there are a few more that we still have to take a look at and see what we can do. Okay, good. Good luck on that. 
Um, the last one on this page is uh, on Town Line Road at the uh, driveway uh, to the Stop and Shop in the Walmart. We're having our UConn students take a look at that to see what uh, improvements can be made at that location. And, and that's one of those that's in Rocky Hill. Yep. Although I, I am meeting with the town engineer and director of public works from Rocky Hill next week to, to look at that and talk about the um, potential for flashing beacons at that crossing. All right, I think these are the last, this is the last page. So sorry, we've taken so much time, but uh, 23 Wilkett Hill Road at the high school drive and Cotwell. That uh, crosswalk is at a funny angle. So there could be some uh, improvements um, on uh, on that one. Uh, Willow and Glenwood was recommended in one of the school reports. Uh, Charter Road and Town Line Road, if we were to do sidewalks up there, would it be a good opportunity to take a look at that intersection and see what kind of fine tuning could be done there. Wilkett Hill and Cumberland Avenue. Once again, that was in the SR, one of the SRTS reports, some minor improvements there. Wilkett Hill Road and Jenrick also was in the SRTS report. That's basically the driveway to the, mag, the magnet school there. Uh, Knott and Follybrook. Fixing the crossing with the crosswalk there is at a, a funky angle. So that could be uh, fine tuned and improved a little bit. And maybe some safety, you know, warnings ahead of the crosswalk as part of the heritage uh, bike path. Good idea. There's a mid block crossing on Knott Street at 341, which gets you into the back side of the community center. So we're having the students look at that one as well to see what- What are you gonna do with that? Uh, we're just looking at it. We're not sure what the final recommendations, just maybe to make it a little more high profile, a little safer. Yeah, I think it's a good idea if you could, as long as the neighbors and stuff agree to that, because it's a ni nice uh, walking access into uh, in, in off of Knott Street. And yep. uh, I've used it in the past. Uh, Derek, number 30, we may have already taken care of as part of the Mill Street project, or, or maybe not. Uh, we did we did mill and pave up to the tracks. Um, I'm not sure what, you know, in the crosswalk category, what this was, would be referring to. Are there, maybe, the, maybe there are sidewalks missing there? Is yeah, there's a, si well, there's a sidewalk gap there, yeah, okay, adjacent to the it. tracks and then to the east as well. Okay, so that's what that is. Um, yeah, most likely. So it's mainly sidewalks to the east, quad mill, mill town Ave. Is that the issue there? There's a gap. Yep. Between Milltown yep. Avenue and just west of the tracks. And that's a very busy in intersection as well. Or very, very, a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic goes down there. A lot of people think there's a shortcut. Yeah. Well, a lot, yeah, a lot of car traffic and then a lot of pedestrian traffic. People are walking that way too. People from our side, uh, 33 Mill Street and so forth, want to walk on, on Middletown Avenue. And people on Middletown Avenue want to go to the store. So you have to right. walk. As I'm concerned that's probably one of the highest priority sidewalks in town. Is that yeah. on Mill Street, as far as I'm concerned. And that Sorry. location. Sorry, I got here late and didn't get, get in on this sidewalk discussion. That's okay. We had you covered. Good. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Mill and Middletown Avenue, taking a look at that intersection and the relationship to sidewalks, crosswalks, stop signs, that kind of thing. Yep, and gaps. Right. And gaps, yep. What do you want to do with the intersection? Uh, we're taking a look at, you know, all of those things together. It's a part of a larger project, just making sure there's enough there's a proper crosswalks and stop signs and such. Okay. Um, Wells Road and Willow, that was in one of the SR, these are, these are all done now. So Wells Road and Willow, Highland and Thornbush. So I think that um, takes us to the end. Did anyone, do we miss anything 
significant that people had in their mind that um, weren't at least touched upon in this, these long lists of projects? Peter, I think in the spot improvements, there's probably a few things um, in that spot improvement map that I sent a week or two ago. I can try to pull them out if you like. Yeah, if you could, if you could uh, whittle that down. Kevin had sent me uh, a listing of recommendations. So if, yeah, if you can um, take a look at those and, and fine tune them and send them to me under the sort of categories that we've broken them down uh, on, that would, that would be very helpful. Peter, for, for sidewalk gaps, was Darwell Drive on the list? It doesn't ring a bell. I just know I've, I know that was a project that was identified before I came to work for the town. Um, I just haven't gotten funded for, but that, from what I understand, we're looking to close a gap on the east side of the road along the soccer fields. Okay. I don't know how that originated, but yep. um, that was another, one of the other projects I was aware of we were looking at. You said Darwell, right? Darwell, yeah. Yep. Okay. I made a note. And that should probably go right down to uh, Corpus Christi School. I was going to say it's a school related project yet it affects the middle school it affects corpus there is no there are kids who every single day walk in the road on Darwell at the bottom of Cotwell too yeah I think I had it listed as Cotwell rather than Darwell that's so the Cotwell one is in there so it's the same it's really the same recommendation so I think we did get that and I'll say what kids do is they cut across the soccer field, but it's like right now, and now everyone's not there, but right now, because the snow, when snow's on the ground, it becomes a real issue. And yep. so they're really in the road. And then there's, which, and then of course the roads are narrower because of the snow it's, and sight lines are worse. So it is, it's something back when I, I was originally involved with the safe routes to school thing. We had discussed it at the time, so. Yep. Okay. So I think Peter, we with sidewalk gaps, there's a, uh, at least one gap on Lexington that's near Charles Wright School. Should be part of the SRTS, but I'm not sure if it is. Le on Lexington, you said? Correct. Okay. I'll send this list out to everybody. And if you want to take some time and go through it, I know we kind of cranked through it. Um, that would be that would be helpful too, just to double check if you had other things that you wanted to make sure were in here. So I will send that out to everybody. Okay, let's move on here. So um, at our next meeting, we'll continue to fine tune these. At some point, we'll start putting these on maps so that we can see geographically where they all are. Um, I wanted to go through the narratives just to make sure we discuss each. Once you see a map, things, you know, you tend not to get into the minutia of it. So we will ultimately convert these into, um, into maps. So, um, and we'll expand upon the recommendations. There'll be notes associated with each one of these recommendations so that going forward, uh, there'll be a little bit of a description of what we are uh, suggesting. We have to also do some costing on some of these uh, and then ultimately prioritizing them uh, and identifying the timing uh, of how we'll go forward with some of these short term versus long term. Uh, as we've mentioned several times, we've still got a bunch of community involvement we've got to go through public meetings, planning and zoning commission, uh, bringing in town council and then ultimately adopting the plan. As we said at the, at the beginning, ultimately this will be a planning and zoning commission adoption as part of the plan of conservation and development. So that's the process we decided to follow to go forward with this. Um, so we're at the point now in the meeting just to give you an update on um, some other things that are going on uh, in town. Uh, Derek and I will be uh, hosting a public information meeting again. It's been a while on the CCGP grant project. Um, so we're going to uh, go back through that process one more time to get any additional 
public information before the various projects uh, are finally designed. We have not picked a date yet, but we will probably be talking next week and picking a date so we can get th those projects back on track uh, on, in, a timely, in a timely manner. Uh, Derek is uh, happy to tell everybody he's, uh, he's got some of his new staff on board. So uh, he's got some resources that he didn't have last couple of meetings. So um, that should help us start moving those projects along. Uh, Derek, you want to talk about the Wilkett Hill Road uh, in the recent public meeting you had? Uh, sure. Yeah, we held a public meeting uh, January 20th. Um, it was pretty well attended. Uh, we had, I think, just over 20 people attend. Um, it, it was pretty well received. We went through the project. Uh, right now, VHB is at about a 35% design stage. So they're trying to finalize that so we can get it submitted into CROG uh, to get some comments back from them. Um, generally, uh, it was pretty well received. Uh, there were comments that were brought up that we're looking at. Um, some of the big ones were a suggestion to take the bus pull-off area um, areas that we were putting on the north and southbound sides and seeing if they could be moved into the underutilized lots on the state property along the east side of the project to get them off of the road, um, help with safety and just kind of uh, have that traffic off the road to the extent we can. So that's something we're pursuing with CT Transit and the state. Um, there were a lot of good suggestions that were brought up and uh, you know, at this point we're trying to work through, through them. Uh, most of them, I think we've been able to incorporate. Um, some we were not, we, you know, ruled out some things just struck physically not being able to put in some left turn lanes that were suggested um, in the islands, turn into the side streets. We just can't physically make the movements. Um, so we're trying to accommodate them other ways, but in general projects moving along, um, we are still, have a goal to get it out to bid, you know, probably late spring at this point and try and get work started this year. Um, what we're trying to work out now is just some of the engineering. Uh, we found we have a lot of clay soils below the concrete road base that was unanticipated pretty much throughout the project. So instead of uh, taking out the concrete road base, the engineer was looking at options to try and keep it. Um, we've had some conversations since that meeting and are talking about um, you know concerns with the amount of joints and, cr and cracks that are out there now that we don't want them you know resurfacing soon. So we're looking at other options where we may continue with taking out the road base. However, we may need to put in some kind of structural geofabric that would help address that issue with the play. Um, and we're narrowing the road to some extent. I don't know if it was discussed at the last meeting, but the northbound lanes we're looking at making um, one lane going northbound, one lane going southbound each direction would have a five foot buffer and then a five foot uh, bike lane along, along the curb line. So that's kind of where that is now and keep it moving quickly as we can. Great, okay. Very good. Uh, great middle road uh, project. Uh, you're doing some surveys farther down the road um, than some of those other projects, but obviously on the radar screen uh, to move that first phase uh, forward. Um, we were informed by the Connecticut DOT that the Putnam Bridge Trail project has been pushed out uh, one year. Uh, so it was scheduled to go out to bid this year and uh, maybe even start construction this year, but they are, have advised us they have pushed it out uh, a year. Uh, I think primarily, if I recall, to uh, budget uh, constraints. Uh, I don't know if funding uh, had been earmarked maybe for other projects, but nevertheless, uh, it has been pushed out. Um, so just wanted you to be aware uh, of that. So the project is now pushed out one, one more year. Hey, Peter, can I just make a comment about that? Do we know if our legislative delegation is aware of that? Um, because they should be kept apprised, you know, just so they can start to nudge a little bit as well and make sure that it's not forgotten because... Um, yeah, that's really disappointing. Yeah, Carrie uh, Zepps Woods uh, was at a Rocky Hill meeting and she uh, heard from a DOT staff. And we also, I, for, I, I personally forwarded the letter uh, to Amy Bello, who's actually on the transportation committee. I haven't heard back from her, but nevertheless, we did forward that notice to her. So she was in the loop on that. 
So it is the kind yes. of the kind of funding that's available. I understand from DOT uh, is kind of like a general pot. So it could uh, continue to slip in the future if other competing projects uh, continue to push it aside. Okay. It does not have like a dedicated, you know, it's its own line item and a, and a schedule. And, and certainly, um, you know, they are your representatives at the state. So you, uh, anyone who's listening here shouldn't hesitate to voice their own personal uh, opinions and support uh, for uh, for that project as well. So uh, it probably wouldn't hurt to give uh, uh, have the ear of our your delegation to let them know your your feelings about that. Peter, I, w I wonder even in, in I mean not to add another meeting to the to the to the pile, but at some point in between now and not wait for another year for them to see. We could we could almost do a host of a like replicate that Glastonbury meeting, and get like Tom was saying, get our legislative people together, town manager of the other towns, and then maybe throw in all the other you know the, the other projects like the Great Meadows project and kind of like have another have another game plan for the not just the funding part, not just not just sit here passively too, just like say that we have these other projects and maybe maybe that would create some pressure too. Yep. Some public relations with the media and stuff like that, being aware of it. Okay. Uh, Derek, you want to uh, mention that this one, a, a Connecticut DOT uh, opportunity. I, I think Derek's looking into this potentially for the town line road crossings. Yeah, DOT is uh, soliciting, uh, they, what they're looking for is interest that towns may have uh, for installing rectangular rapid flashing beacons, also known as RRFBs, at uh, mid-block crossings on municipal roads. Sounds like they may have some funding available to do a project. So at this point, they're just soliciting interest and looking for municipalities to give them a list of, say, the top five locations that they would be looking for. Um, to, to qualify, these projects have to have a certain traffic volume um, and speeds. It is difficult for us to meet those in all areas, although they do have some flexibility in the requirements uh, regarding you know, location to schools, heavy pedestrian traffic. Um, so right now, with uh, sorry, we're working with the PD to look at areas that make the most sense. Um, I think we probably will move forward, although I'm still waiting for some feedback from some other staff on uh, what we what we think we can do. It may require us to collect some data over the next couple of weeks so we can have some, um, not so much volume, but more speed data. If we can demonstrate there's a speeding issue in certain areas, it, ha it weighs hev more heavily for installing that type of infrastructure. So I think as part of this program, DOT uh, may fund the installation and then the town would be responsible for maintenance going forward. Where, where would they go? We're looking at different locations. Um, no, I mean, like physically, like, like, is it, are they by the stoplight or is it on a stop sign or how it, would that work? They are at, only at mid block crossing. So it would be somewhere where we don't have stop signs or an intersection and there would be oh. a uh, pedestal on either side of the road. Someone would push the pedestal and then there's a uh, rectangular beacon that's probably about, you know, a couple feet wide, four to six inches tall that flashes very brightly when somebody pushes it to alert drivers that there's a pedestrian crossing the road ahead. Sounds like those would be perfect at uh, Silas Dean and Church Street and uh, Wells Road, but you can't put them at intersections, right? Yes, and, they, and this is not for state roads. This is only for, they're looking for municipal roads. And I don't want any more flashing lights on our streets. How about this consideration? Brook. Yeah, how about not in Follybrook? Uh, that might be an option. I don't, I'm not clear yet on what they define as at an intersection. Um, that That is technically an intersection, although there's no stop signs there. So I think we need a little clarification on that. And that's something I'm looking into. Martian Broad might be another one too. Uh, yeah. I'm, what I'm street? At... What did you say, Kay? <laughs> Martian Broad. 
<laughs> yeah, that's a challenging location. That's a part of our community connectivity grant program. We did get some funding to put a new, uh, to bring basically bring down the sidewalk that's along the cemetery to the road and have a crossing there. Um, right now I'm in the process of just evaluating sight lines and seeing with the speeds and the amount of traffic we have, if it's going to be doable at that location or if we're, you know, I'm looking at options of maybe moving it to a mid block crossing that would be a little bit further closer to Main Street. So traffic coming around the corner as they leave, uh, coming from the highway would have better visibility to that crosswalk. So there's some options there, but that might be one. But just remember, somebody's going to have to live with those flashing lights in their front yard. Yep, that's uh, that's mm -hmm. one of the yeah, you know, that's one of the considerations with it. You're right, Judy. Okay. Um, lastly, on this project update, uh, you may have uh, seen uh, in the in the press that the uh, Connecticut DOT is doing a Greater Hartford Mobility Study. Uh, they're calling it the GHMS. Um, this is a broad regional multimodal study uh, for the entire region, you know, West Hartford across the river and uh, all the way south to Cromwell, which obviously includes us. So the week of February 22nd, uh, they're having a series of online uh, discussions. This is all being done virtually. So uh, in order to have some say, um, there are these upcoming opportunities. I encourage anyone who's interested to um, take a look at the websites. They're using all sorts of other social media uh, to uh, advertise this. I'm not sure exactly what the individual formats are going to be that week, but nevertheless, I wanted to make everybody uh, aware of it. So they are looking at uh, projects of regional significance. Um, so I would think that, you know, and, and bike and pedestrian projects are part of that. So um, I would encourage anyone with an interest to uh, take a look at the website, uh, take a look at the portal that they've established for public involvement, and uh, uh, don't be shy about uh, weighing in. So they are looking big picture. <laughs> levels of, of potential improvements for the entire region to improve connectivity uh, using all modes of traffic. So this is a pretty big deal and they're talking uh, uh, potentially billions of dollars in improvements. Um, so uh, just want to make sure everybody's aware of it, uh, that you've heard of it and feel free to participate. Uh, we will certainly be doing that uh, as well. So. Uh, I would think things like, you know, uh, the Connecticut River walkways connecting Hartford South, you know, the, the rail corridor heading north and south, all of those things I think will be uh, part of the uh, conversations. Peter, thanks for that heads up. Uh, if you hear any more about specific dates or times during that week, please let the uh, let us know. I'm already signed up for the email list that goes with that, and I've gotten absolutely nothing from it. So okay. Hmm. Yeah, I, I haven't it? either. I haven't either, Kevin. So so maybe they just haven't sent anything out yet. Yeah, their website specifically lists this week, February 22nd, uh, as the week when they're going to be doing a lot of this stuff. So um, yeah, you may want to take a look again. Um, and we certainly will do. If we see some, something more, we'll, we'll certainly pass it on. But it's a big, this is a big deal, so. But this is just an initial stage or on this major, major effort, right? Uh, yes, but uh, you know, I mean, that's what, doing stage. But that's when a lot of the initial direction gets set and the agenda starts getting set for the various follow-up steps. So um, okay. it's an important time to make sure they hear what some of the issues are. And how are they gonna handle it? Zoom probably? Yes, these will be virtually, virtual online, social media. They'll be taking it through various modes. So, but mostly oh, okay. uh, through the electronic. And you'll hear more about how they're gonna handle it. Whatever I hear, we'll, we'll pass on, but I just wanna make sure you guys were all aware of it. Good. Uh, any other questions, comments, things that would benefit the attendees tonight? 
uh, from a bike perspective, uh, is there any talk about the bikes coming back, the rental bikes coming back to the area? Uh, there, there are. There was a contractor that they were working with. Um, we put our name in the pot and we did not generate interest from them as a community they wanted to uh, work with. Chris. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That was also a scooter based company too. So uh, I think that's one of the reasons why it kind of stalled. Yeah. But there was there was some hesitance there was hesitance hesitancy about the scooter rentals. Okay. Anything else? Um, I just want to mention about last time we talked about the uh, flower art bikes on Maine. Yep. Uh, as being like a springtime version of the uh, the scarecrows, and Peter was very nice. He hooked me up with um, talking with Dr. Pascal. Was Pas Pascal, yeah, yeah, Joe, Joe and, Pascal. Yep, and uh, I'm going to be going to a meeting of the Shop Owners Association on the 18th. Okay. Start working on the details, but it looks like they're pretty positive about it, and we're looking at May. Great. That. So thank you. Um, thank you for facilitating that, Peter. And, and no thanks. problem. I'll probably see you at the meeting on the 18th. Great. What time is it at? They're usually at six o'clock or something like that. Okay, great. Yep. Peter, one other thing I wanted to uh, mention, uh, Tom, you had talked about uh, places for uh, mountain biking and uh, the Keisha Farm Committee is meeting and uh, I think um, we're gonna have a, uh, a land use committee. And it seems like uh, at some point, you and I might wanna just explore back there and see where it goes. Oh, I would love to do that. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll text you, my, I'll put my phone number up there now if you don't already have it. I probably do, but okay. yeah, or either, either way. All right, anything else? Um, I, I just wanted to um, introduce myself to anyone who I haven't met. My name is Martha Keneally. I'm local. I live on Fairmont Street, um, but I'm mostly um, joining to, I uh, work for Riverfront Recapture. Um, we manage the Riverfront trails and parks in Hartford and East Hartford. We've just expanded into um, Windsor with the purchase of a new uh, new park and new land up in the north end and our ultimate vision is to expand south. Um, we're very interested in the Putnam Bridge project. We're very interested in finding ways to um, facilitate connections to Weathersfield. Um, we've been working closely with Windsor to facilitate connections there. We just um, uh, worked on a connecting communities grant that's going to connect the Hart Hartford River Walk to Windsor. Um, across Windsor Meadow State Park. And so just wanted to say hello. And, um, you know, this is very interesting for me from a long way back to when my kids were in school, but, uh, you know, um, glad to be making regional connections as well. So thanks for joining thing, us. Well, one thing if I, if I could mention that's really off the subject, but the Brainerd Field is getting ready, <clears throat> working toward cutting the trees down. And uh, I would love to make them do habitat improvements, especially on the land that's in Weathersfield on the Folly Brook nature area. And, uh, but it goes around as well. And that's a regional thing. Uh, I need to reach out to Hartford, but maybe there's some overlap into the riverfront recapture as well. Uh, that's uh, the improvement of the riverfront in all of those ways is a big interest of ours. We're doing it in our property up in the North End. Um, we're taking what was like a field that was being mined and, and used for agriculture. You know, we're, we're going to remediate it and we're going to restore habitats and wetlands and have a trail that goes across it in a public park. So we love all that. That's wonderful. <laughs> all right. Anyone else? Okay, so um, uh, just a reminder, you've got photos, all that kind of stuff, send it our way so we can incorporate it into the uh, plan. 
Um, I'm suggesting that we get a, get together again in another two weeks so we can keep forging uh, forward rather than meeting in another month. So I am, uh, I am game uh, to do that if, if everybody else is willing to meet. So I want to throw that out to the group. I'm not sure if that's a yes or a no, the silence. <laughs> I'm good for the first half of that, Peter, but that's uh, the fourth Thursday for the trust, Great Meadows Trust meeting. Okay. Any other thoughts out there? It works for me. Okay. All right, let's try and do that then. We'll meet in uh, two weeks. Try and keep forging ahead on these things. All right, I think uh, that's it, unless anyone else has any um, anything else to add. Okay, then. Everybody have a uh, good night and we'll see you in uh, two weeks. Thank you. Great, thanks, Peter. Okay, thanks. guys. Have and a good there. night. Hey, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you.